Okay, um, hi, my name is Derek, um, and I'm your instructor for our machine learning course. Um, in this video, this is uh, some materials from chapter four of our hands-on machine learning textbook on uh, regularizing machine learning models. Um, so, um, so kind of as, as a note before we begin here, the, um, um, the, the materials in the textbook goes over the regularization of linear regression. So, so these have special names for linear regression, ridge regression, lasso regression, and elastic net. Okay, uh, I'll probably talk more about these in the video, but um, these are really kind of general things. It's just because of um, um, of uh, the communities that they came out of, they got special names for linear regression. But um, these are more generally known as L2 regularization, which is based on the L2 norm, which is really just the sum of the squares. Um, and, and this will be more make more sense once once you've read the stuff and we look at the video. Um, and and the other one is really just the L1 regularization, which is based on the L1 norm, which is the sum of the absolute values of your feature weights. Um, or your, or your feature theta parameters, okay? So, um, so the, the point before I move on here is that even though, you know, we talk about in, in this video and in this chapter specifically for linear regression, and they kind of have the special names, ridge regression and lasso regression, um, you can basically do this kinds of normalization for most machine learning models, although, again, the, 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 the naming and the way you, you get it um, is not consistent. Um, and that's mostly because these were all developed by separate communities and things, and they had their own way of doing things. And I wouldn't call it exactly rediscovering stuff, but, um, but, but yeah, there was no, no overarching sort of framework. Um, so, so people, different people, different communities did it different ways, and you get that reflection when you're trying to do regularization um, on machine learning models like this. All right. So let's go ahead and get started. So, um, like I said, we're, we're looking at um, chapter four, kind of the, the, the fifth, near near the end, the, the fifth section, the last section of uh, chapter four, and actually not the last one, so we've still got logistic regression, but um, um, so regularization um, and, and like I already mentioned, we're going to be looking at regularizi regularizing linear regression, um, but uh, the, the, the general idea applies to many machine learning models. I won't say all, but, but a lot of them have the same kind of thing. A anytime you've got a model where you're learning, a, you know, you're, you're, you're trying to build a set of, uh, you know, uh, uh, parameters, like the theta parameters, um, you know, trying to fit those to your set of data, which is, is very typical of many of the um, of the um, supervised learning sorts of machine learning that we do. So whenever you have that, you can apply usually some sort of regularization, okay? And this is a type of um, metaparameter tuning that I wish I would have mentioned in the previous video, okay? So when you're overfitting and your model is too powerful, you can do you, you can look at some of the metaparameters of the model and try and tune those. One of the things you can also do is try and add regularization. So regularization will reduce the effect of overfitting, um, as we'll talk about here, right? So, um, so yeah, I mean, in practice, we never know the, the right complexity of the model. So like I, I discussed in the previous video, a, a general approach is, is maybe to start with a model that's too powerful um, and then do things to, to, to tune it to the right kind of level. And one thing you can do is, is make start with a, a model that's overpowered, overfitting, and add some regularization. And, and that's often kind of a good approach, right? And so that's why regularization is um, important to machine learning models, right? So despite kind of these names, you know, like L2 norm, L1 norm, it's not really that complicated of an idea, okay? So uh, we'll start with ridge regression, which is also really the L2 norm. So ridge regression, the name, actually I don't even know if that's the name of a person or if that refers to some kind of idea of how it works. Um, I think our textbook discussed that a little bit, but uh, I believe that this came out of, from like the statistics academic community, 
that you know studies logistic regression in, in great depth, um, kind of uh, uh, came up with the, the names like ridge regression and lasso regression. Mathematicians tend to, you know, people doing stuff in like linear algebra and, and uh, things like that uh, tend to talk about, um, you know, represent these things as uh, the norms of feature vectors and things like that. So the L2 norm, um, you know, which is what ridge regression is, is really just taking the square of the theta parameters here. So I'm jumping ahead a little bit, but think about our cost function that we've been using up to this, this point for linear regression, the mean squared error. So given some set of theta parameters, we can calculate what the cost is um, for our data set that we're trying to fit, right? Um, so uh, re regularization is really just adding a penalty, okay? So when you're overfitting, most likely what you're doing is some of those theta parameters, like, like think of a high degree polynomial, like like maybe you're, 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 uh, you're degree 100, degree 99, degree 98 terms for the theta here. Uh, if, if your model's too high, uh, you, and if you're actually using those terms, you, you know, you're, you're, you're overfitting your data and getting a lot of wiggle, right? So what regularization does is, is add a penalty, right? So the, the direct way to add a penalty is just to, uh, you know, again, we need the magnitude of the theta. So, so we can't just, because thetas can be positive and negative when you, when you fit these here. So, so you just, you don't want to just sum up the thetas to add like a penalty to your cost. So what you do is you, you sum up um, the square if you're doing the L, so this is this is the the same as doing an L, what's known as an L2 norm, all right? So if you just sum up, sum up the squares of your theta, and there's a subtle thing here, I don't remember if our textbook talks about it, you don't actually add in um, theta zero, so you don't add in the bias term, you only add the penalty for the terms that are, uh, for the non-bias terms, that, that are the actual features, you know, that, uh, that could be something like the x to the power of one, x to the power of two, you know, which could be polynomial features of your uh, of your model that you're um, creating, all right? So you know, so so, so it, it's it's it, again if 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 uh, if, if that um, is you know a little bit too much. I mean, all you really have to understand about regularization and about the the ridge or the L two normalization is all we're doing is we're taking the cost that we had before. Um, and, and this can be a different cost function for different machine learning um, algorithms that we work with. So, so, but whatever our base cost function is, like mean squared error for um, linear regression, then we just sum up the squares of the theta parameters. So basically what that means is that since this is a penalty, um, w when those theta parameters are big, you're gonna, your, your it's going to affect your cost. It's going to make your cost worse. And remember, we're trying to minimize the cost, all right? So when we're searching for... Um, uh, models, you know, fits of theta parameters, the, the best cost models are going to be ones that, that do well on the mean squared error, but also that, that keep, if you're adding this regularization, um, ones that keep the, the theta parameters as small as possible while, while doing well on the mean squared error, right? So the, the, the practical effect of that is that if you really do need a term, like the squared term or the cube term, to explain your data, uh, uh, the, the 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 usefulness for this part of the cost will outweigh the penalty that you have to take for having the right setting for that theta parameter. But if you don't really need that because you know it's 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 too powerful, it's overfit for the model. Uh, that 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 uh, the, the use you get from keeping a high value for that in there will, will never outweigh the, the penalty you get by adding in the regularization term, and it will tend to to reduce or remove the higher order terms that don't end up being useful, or, or re not remove them completely, but reduce them relatively quickly, right, in importance. So, so the, the effect is then that, that you tend to settle down on only the terms that you really kind of need, although um, L2 norm, that, as I'll talk about, doesn't completely el eliminate terms um, usually, like the L1 norm does, the, the next one that we talk about. Um, so, yeah, this video is probably going to be relatively quick. I'm probably just going to kind of show you these now. So if we, if we train, um, so again, like in the previous video, 
I think I'm using exactly the same um, made up data set that we had so you can clearly see what's happening. So this is the, the true nature of the model is it's a quadratic relationship between our x and y, right? So it's a one-half x squared plus three-fourths x plus three and, and a little bit of noise, right? Um, and we'll show again like we did before a um, linear model um, with degree 25, so, so we're using a, a, you know, it's only a, the, the true nature of the model is it's a, it's a quadratic, a degree 2, but, but we're training a degree 25 for all these, but we're using different amounts of, of linearization, uh, of regularization, right? So, so all these are going to use what is called ridge regression in the context of a linear regression, um, and here, the alpha parameter that I kind of skipped over, that tells you the importance. So if you make alpha zero, then you're not using regularization, right? So, so you're just using the cost function, which is what our first one did here, right? But if you make alpha bigger, one or 100, uh, you, you give more importance to this. Uh, so one, you know, you give a little bit of importance to the penalty, right, which tends to drive down the theta parameters a little bit, and if you make it bigger, like 100, you give a lot of importance, so you have to have really small parameters to get a good minimal cost, all right? So these are the only things we show, and you get a result like this, okay? So here, you know, this is our data points for our, um, our, our squared, um, our, our quadratic function, right? And again, but all three of these, in this case, are a degree 25 polynomial, but with no regularization, so alpha of zero means no regularization, you get kind of the overfitting. You get all the wiggles and the squiggles trying to go through all the points, right? But um, if you use a little bit, uh, or well, if you use too much, it's going to try to drive it to more like a linear model. So basically what happens with a really high regularization, this is probably too much, um, and, and you get kind of the best straight line fit, right? So if you get about the right amount of regularization, you can see that uh, even with the degree 25 polynomial, we're getting something close to our degree 2 um, uh, fit here, which is what this kind of orangish line is. And, and the dotted line is the true uh, quadratic function there, right? Um, So yeah, if you look at the actual uh, theta parameters, so here we're showing um, the the intercept. Um, so, so again, this this is not regularized. So so the intercept still ended up being about three, which was correct. You know the 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 bias term. But then these are showing the twenty five parameters for you know this is going to be the x to the power of one, x to the power of two, up to the x to the power of twenty five, right? Um, so you'll notice, again, remember this is a, a squared uh, a quadratic, so you'll notice that the x, but we had an x1 term as well. So you notice the x1 term is about 3 fourths, which was right, uh, but, but the x squared um, uh, shouldn't have been 1 half, but, but you'll, you'll also notice though that the x squared, uh, x to the power of 4, um, x to the power of 8, um, Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Yeah, this one. Uh, all because basically things that are power of two, four, eight, sixteen uh, can all give the the same thing as the power of two, right? So those are all. So, so and notice none of these got driven to zero, so they're all still in there. But kind of if you sum up the effects of the power of two plus the power of four plus the power of eight plus the power of sixteen here, uh, it, it it'll. Kind it, it'll kind of give you the same effect as this one half x squared, although it, it, it managed to keep all these around here a little bit. Right, that ended up being our best fit for the degree twenty five polynomial. Right. Um, so the ridge regression one was where. Um, that was the, uh, the, I had bad names on these. That was where we were using an alpha of 100. I, I, I meant to rename that ridge regression 100 there. So it just gives you a, an idea. So with a really big, um, it tended to um, drive all these to, you know, um, um, small values for the most part. So.
at least nothing like three quarters. And so, so they're all just kind of little point uh, one for the for the x to the one um, and uh, and uh, x squared. So, all right. Um, So one of the difficulties of using regularization, I kind of already mentioned, is, is that it's, it's not consistent. So you have to know or you have to read the documentation for different things. You know? so, so for ridge regression, um, you specify the um, alpha parameter. That's how you specify the amount of um, uh, L2 regularization, right? For others, you might have different names. So like for the stochastic gradient descent regressor, um, there's a, a parameter called penalty, which you can set to be L1 or L2, you know, to get either this L2, um, which is the, basically the same as ridge, or the L1, which is basically the same as lasso here, right? So yeah, if you use L2 of the, of the right amount for a, a SGD regressor rather than a linear regressor, you get a similar thing. Um, um, uh, like like we just showed with the right amount of uh, regularization for the linear uh, regressor. So, um, okay. So oh, I guess yeah. Lasso actually stands for uh, kind of an acronym. Apparently, least absolute shrinkage and selection operator regression. Um, so, so yeah, I don't know if Ridge has a similar kind of thing, but but yeah, I, I mean, I always I'll just think of this as, as L1 regression um, because it's the L1 norm, and, and L1 in linear algebra is just the absolute value of of the weights. Okay, so again, this will give you a magnitude, but a, a slightly different way of getting the magnitude. And we sum those up, and again, we're, we're not summing up the theta zero term, only the theta one through n. So, so the non-biased terms that we're adding in as a penalty here. So, the 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 thing you know that that you ought to kind of memorize, if nothing else, about these is that L two will not tend to drive these completely to zero. So you'll still keep all these. So you normally want to use L two regularization. Uh, when you think all of your features are, are um, independent of one another, so you don't really want them to go away, so, so you want the model to keep them, but, but to, to try and, you know, make the parameters right for each one and, and drive the, the things to zero or, or be negligible for the ones that really don't help you build a hypothesis of your data, right? But lasso or, or, or the L1 regression tends to drive things to zero that, that it finds to not be useful. So that'll just eliminate certain theta parameters, okay? So normally, before you do training, you wanna do kind of that by hand. So if you have features that are not independent of other features, you, you mostly usually wanna remove those, okay? But if you can't do that for some reason or you're not certain if some features are, are dependent on others, you can try the, the L1 uh, normalization or this kind of lasso regression. And it will sort of find those for you and, and remove them um, and, and drive them to zero, okay? And then, again, this is a little bit of a made-up example, but we know that, that the parameters x cubed, x to the fourth, um, are not needed for this particular data set because it's, 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 it's really a quadratic uh, function that's governing the data with some noise, right? So, so we can try the same thing that we did before using the um, um, a 25-degree polynomial, but using lasso regression from scikit-learn, right? So again, it uses um, a parameter called alpha, right? Um, uh, I can't remember why I used a really small one instead of zero there. So, but, but that's effectively zero. So using no um, regression, I think it's because of this error message convergence warning. So. Um, but um, you know, and, and again, you know, I had to, I had to kind of play around with these to get sort of the right amount, right? So so here, 0 0.01 works well as an example of about the right amount, and 1.0 is kind of a little bit too much in this particular case for the L1 regularization for you know a degree 25 polynomial here. So if we plot the same thing, so again, notice uh, you know, like I said. Uh, the, this was too much, but notice this is a, actually a straight line because it actually ends up eliminating everything 
um, except for the bias term, uh, which ends up being around three, right? So you get a straight line with a slope of zero, um, and, and you know, so because all the theta parameters are zero, just, just the straight line that gives the best fit, the, the, the straight horizontal line that gives the best fit for this data um, when you have too much L1 regularization. And notice this, this is actually a quadratic, um, the, the one that kind of worked the best here, because it eliminated the... Um, the, uh, L, the 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 cubed and higher terms and and, and, and as we'll see so if if you print out for that one the the last regression small the intercept and the coefficients you'll see they're all zero except for the uh, x to the squared power um, and uh, this is the x to to the one power x to the one power so this should have been 0.75 and this should have been one half um, or that that was the true. Uh, values of these for a lot of, and the intercept was three. So notice, and notice how it drove everything basically to zero. Right? Whereas the one that was too big, it drove everything to zero, like like I already mentioned. So, so you end up with a, a flat horizontal line. So. Um, but you know, you only do that when you suspect, and, and you can't kind of eliminate by hand. So normally, when you have features of a data set, you don't want them to be eliminated because they're going to be helpful, right? Uh, but but you can sometimes try like an L1 to see, like like maybe you do have some features that for some reason um, aren't particularly useful, or or maybe just combinations of of other features, right? So so, so that can sometimes help you detect things like that. All right. Um, all right, so elastic net is really kind of a complicated combination. Of, it's, it's just, you know, you can have L1 and L2 regularization, so you can have uh, the absolute value, and then there are um, two parameters, alpha and R, to, uh, so you can have them in different combinations. So, um, yeah, when R is zero, uh, yeah, so when R is zero, you have no of the L1, um, and, and it's all L2, and when R is 1, you have all of the L1 and none of the L2 regularization, and if it's like one half, you'll be have a mix of half of this one and half of that one, and then again, alpha can be used kind of in a similar way, as you can think of that independently, so, um, um, you know, so if you make alpha really big, it'll make the penalty, with however much you're using of L1 and L2 really big, and, all right. So that's kind of the result that you get if you use 0 0.01. So it ended up keeping. So it, so you can kind of use this to try and drive some terms, but it did keep the x squared and the x fourth term a bit. But we all also had a little bit of the x cubed, um, but um, not too much. It almost got that one to zero as well. So um, yeah, finally, then a very different way to regularize is uh, to use early stopping. Okay. So this is kind of a cheap way, but but basically, if you again plot the learning curves like we talked about in the previous um, um, video, and if if you see the 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 performance on the data that you trained with, so your training cost performance, when you see that plateau, uh, that means that you have probably reached. Um, um, the, the best fit that you can get. And if you keep training from that, you're just going to be overfitting um, usually if, if your model is, is overpowered, right? So, so if you keep doing that, I mean, the, 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 the cost on your data that you're training with uh, won't go down anymore. It won't go up anymore either. It'll plateau. But um, since you're overfitting, you'll do worse and worse on your um, um, on data you haven't seen before, so on your validation or your test data, right? So, uh, so, so another way to um, do kind of regularization, um, which is often kind of preferred, actually, is just to detect that. So do early stopping, right? So instead of allowing your model to keep training uh, and it ends up overfitting all the stuff, stop when you get to that kind of point. Um, um, and, and that's often kind of the best you can uh, uh, do in, until you change your model to, to be more of the right power for the relationship that you're trying to model. Um, all right. So, yeah, so, so we covered um, all these things and also earlier oh, stopping. I probably maybe should have added on there. So I, I think kind of just to summarize on that, um, uh, even though there's special names for these for linear regression, ridge, and lasso regression, just uh, understand the 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 
kind of underlying concept, this idea that we're adding up either the sum of the squares or the sum of the absolute value as a penalty. And that's kind of what, what the basic regularization is, right? And then many machine learning methods, algorithms that we'll talk about allow you to do both, you know, either or both of these um, to them, although you might have to um, access them or add them in in different ways. So they tend to be dependent on the particular method and, and the community that built that machine learning algorithm, how you add in some L2 regularization or L1 regularization. Okay, so that's it for this video. Um, and uh, yeah, I will see you guys all in the next one then.